Namaste everyone. Today we'll be looking at using colors while designing for data visualizations. Now let me just give you a disclaimer that I am no expert in data visualization. Uh, it's just that sometimes I have to work, I have to design for different bar graphs, pie charts, and heat maps. And uh, in this video, I'll just be sharing the resources and uh, everything that I've learned so far while designing for data visualizations. So let's get started. Now I know that it can get quite daunting when you're trying to, when you're just starting to design for data visualization uh, because there are, there can be a lot of colors that you can choose from but you need to be a bit careful since colors can mean different things. Um, like for example, red can mean, uh, in cases of temperatures, red can mean very high temperature and blue can mean very cold temperature. Um, similarly, uh, red can also mean that it's a sign of danger. Um, so yeah, we need to be very careful while uh, choosing colors. So the very first rule to choose a color for your chart or your for, or for your graph uh, is to know the type of message that you're trying to convey through your visualization. So it really depends on the nature of your data. Uh, what you're trying to uh, showcase, what you're trying to communicate to the user, um, it, it all depends on that, the type of color palette that you choose. Now, for starters, uh, just know that there are mainly three kinds of information that you'd want to portray through a visualization. The first one is quantitative, the second one is divergent, and the third one is qualitative. So we'll see each of these in detail and depending on one of these types of uh, visualization that we want to showcase, uh, we need to choose uh, a specific type of color palette. So the first stop is the quantitative type of data and here we want the colors to represent the numerical value of the data. And for this kind of uh, information, for this kind of visualization, we'd want to choose uh, these type of color palettes. And as you can see, they can belong to one hue, like here in the second example, it starts with a very lighter set of blue and then goes on to the uh, to a very concentrated and darker set of blue but you can also choose from more than one hue uh, and but you need to be careful uh, don't go for opposite extremes of hues uh, from a color wheel try to choose from neighboring uh, hues in your color wheel like for example, the first one, it starts with a very lighter set of yellow and then goes on to very darker and considered set of uh, red. And similarly in the last one, it starts with a very lighter set of green and then goes on to, uh, but then it goes on to a very darker and considered set of blue. So for example, here you can see that uh, this particular infographic is uh, has a set of this particular color palette where it starts with a very light set of yellow and goes on to darker set of red so meaning this represents the lower range of data and this represents the higher value range of data and as you can clearly see here that russia ha only russia has the highest uh, value of data according to this map so here in another example here, we can see that uh, it's represented by sets of the blue color here and the darker ones, it represent the lower, uh, say lower range of the data here while the brightest and the saturated one uh, uh, represent the highest value range of data. Um, like for example here, so these two particular sections of this map, well, they have the, they fall under the, uh, the highest range of data here. Whenever we're trying to 
make the callers represent the numerical value of our information of our data well we can go with these kind of color palettes for the divergent kind of data where the information that we want to represent are come from two opposite extremes we generally choose a set of color palette uh, that actually represents the opposite spectrum the opposite sides of our uh, of a situation of or of a norm um, so for these uh, generally we choose we cannot choose color palettes that ranges from one color palette and one one hue and goes on to another set of hue which generally falls on the opposite side of a color wheel and they kind of they generally mean opposite things and so, for example, here, the first one, you can see that it starts with a blue, a very saturated, darker shade of blue, and then it goes on to a light shade of blue, and then it changes into yellow, a lighter shade of yellow, and then goes on to a very darker and concentrated shade of red. Um, you can think of this type of color palette as an extension of uh, quantitative because this also represent numerical value of our data but they the meaning they want to portray is that we are showcasing two opposite extremes of uh, information of our data and in the second and third one third examples we can see that the, the second one it starts with a very darker and concentrated set of green goes on to a very lighter set of green then switches on to a very lighter set of purple and then uh, ends with a darker and concentrated set of uh, purple uh, the last one starts with green and then it uh, goes on to end up with a very darker set of brown So a very obvious example of divergent data would be uh, showing the distribution of temperatures. And in this uh, infographics, uh, the colors represent the temperatures and the, the, blue, the color blue, it represents very cold temperatures while the darker set of red here represent extremely hot temperatures. And in this particular infographic, it is just showing how over the years our summers are getting hotter. So the last one is the qualitative type of data. And for this kind of visualization, we use colors to not to represent the numerical value or range of numerical values. Rather, we want the colors to represent uh, classes of data, to represent each class of data that we are showcasing. So, we need to be a bit careful while using this kind of color palette as uh, we choose from multiple hues, but we need to make sure that uh, one set of hue does not, uh, one hue does not dominate over any other hues and it should not look like, uh, it should not represent that one hue has a higher value than the other, just by looking at the colors and the numerical values, they are actually represented by other characteristic of the, of the, of the visualization that we are using. It can represent, uh, if it's a bar graph, the length of the bars, they represent the numerical value. If it's a bubble chart, the size of each bubble represent uh, the numerical value of our data. An example of qualitative data visualization is this one where the color blue represents the Democrats and the color red, it represents the Republicans. Another example for qualitative data here is this bowel chart right here. And each color, it represents a category of countries uh, with the income. So the pink here, so this the pink uh, the set of pink color here it represents uh, the high income countries while the brown represents upper middle income countries the blue represents lower middle income countries and the last one which is which is not present here well if it was 
uh, then that color would have represented the low income countries. So whenever we're trying to represent these different classes of data, we're here, as you can see, that the color itself, they don't represent the numerical value of our data, whereas the size represent uh, the, the size of each of these bubbles, well, they represent the numerical value. And the colors, they simply represent which class of countries they belong to. So those were the three types of data uh, that we generally showcase with a visualization, the qualitative, the quantitative, and the divergent. Um, sometimes, apart from these, sometimes it might, be the it might be a case where we don't want the calls to speak anything uh, because we just want other characteristics of our data to, to, to represent the numerical value and we want the callers to be subdued and we don't want them to distract the users from actual uh, graphs. And for such cases, uh, we tend to go with the neutral callers, as you can see in this graph here. So it's very subtle, grayish blue color that we've used here. And they basically don't represent anything. And uh, we, 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 we don't want the callers to distract the user from this uh, bar. And we just want the length of each of these bar to, to, to do the talking here. Sometimes we want our brand to be focused too while um, using callers for visualizations. And it's okay to use your brand caller un until unless it, it doesn't portray the opposite meaning. Um, so be just be careful while you're portraying, uh, while you're using your brand color, just make sure that it doesn't give the wrong meaning to the users. As you can see here in this example, um, the, we have used the color yellow because this is the brand of this particular, uh, website here of this dashboard and we've, we've used our brand color, uh, whenever, wherever it's possible and where it doesn't actually distract the users away away from the content. So just before I leave, I would want to talk about this fantastic tool. It's called Color Brewer 2.0 and it helps you to generate color palette for your visualization work. So I, I often come to this tool um, to to pick a color palette and take take it from there so it it allows to choose number of data classes from here and then it also helps us to choose the type of data that we are representing uh, as we talked earlier so the first one is sequential which is same as quantitative the second is the diversing the third is qualitative. So depending on the nature of data that we're representing, it suggests us a different type of color palettes. It also allows us to choose uh, to choose from uh, different um, characteristics of this color palette, like if they are colorblind safe or not. Uh, so if we pick here, like for example, colorblind safe, so only this color palette for qualitative for these four classes of data, um, we only have one color palette. Um, we can also choose a printer friendly or we can also choose photocopy safe. So in this case, there is no color palette uh, that's photocopy safe here. So yeah, it, it's, this is very helpful. Um, and you can copy these hex values or any other values that you would want, you can choose from here. Um, so you can pick these colors and use this color palette for your uh, next infographic or next uh, data visualization. So that's it for me for this video. And as I said earlier, I'm no data expert. I'm no data visualization expert. I'm still learning. I've just shared what I've learned so far. Um, I'm still learning and uh, I would love to receive, 
feedback from you to receive comments from you if you have anything uh, more to share on this or is there or if there's anything that I'm doing wrong um, I'm happy to uh, go through your comments thanks guys cheers <laughs>